you mentioned the telescope and you're a photographer as well, so obviously there's a connection between telescope and your own work as a photographer. Would you like to talk a little bit about the photography? Yeah, so it again links up with all the idea of fractals, light. Um, um, I, I'm, I'm actually quite like you, very interested in how um, we can shape images in a formal construct. So for instance, right now, you can only see me in a rectangular frame because of the way technology is, unless you used an oval lens or you mask certain things, but the natural thing would be just a rectangle. Yes, you can um, um, tinker with the aspect ratio and so on, but that's only gradation of the, of the wider rectangle. So uh, one of the things that interested, in, interested me a lot was what you see in that frame or the rectangle, okay, that's the obvious thing. But what you're not seeing is and influencing that frame is probably even more interesting. For instance, right now, we are in shooting in natural light. So the way the viewer would see us is so much dependent on something that we cannot control, which is the outside light. The same shot on a sunny day would evoke very different kind of feelings. Maybe there'll be sweat on my forehead, there'll be more bees buzzing around, the colors will be more saturated. Contrast um, ratio. The contrast ratio yeah. would be much more severe. So um, it's like saying that on the on the on on the on a printed page, the white space is just as important for me as the printed ink part of the page. People only focus on the obvious the words or the image or the dialogue in question. But often we forget the silence or the silences that actually makes the whole um, idea of the metaphor much more cohesive and a whole, really. I like that idea because I remember when I, I, I do a lot of artwork and we often do line drawing. Yeah. And one of the art pieces I produced was where I just drew the shadow and it meant that you literally had just a shadow and you, your eye then filled in where you thought the shape of the person would be on the other side so it's exploring the same kind of idea. Yeah, it's the whole idea of uh, umbra and penumbra. Yeah. You talked about rhythm. Um, is, is music an influence in your poetry? Very much, very much. You know, how can you stay, possibly stay away from music and dance? In fact, uh, I will talk about the music a little bit uh, later, but dance certainly excites me a lot more because my next book is on classical Indian and Western dance. Uh, the book is called, uh, well, the book is tentatively titled The Whispering Anklet. It's the anklet that women wear, the dancers wear, especially for Indian classical dance. And it's an obsession of mine which has been, you know, uh, uh, there for at least 20, 25 years. Uh, the kind of high I get when I watch a good dance performance and when I come out of the auditorium or wherever the dance is. I just don't think I can get it anywhere else. You know? Because in, in, in an interesting way, dance um, incorporates all the things we were talking about. It's performance, it's structure, it's rhythm, it's music. A lot of the dance is actually uh, dance to sung songs, which is actually written poetry in meter. Then the choreography, of course, you uh, requires lighting. And so, and any one aspect, if it's out of kilter, the whole thing can fall apart. Similarly with film, I mean, you know, use the same sort of uh, tools. So, um, yeah, music, rhythm, dance, they all go very hand in hand. I mean, I always have music on when I'm in the house, in my office, uh, in my study. Uh, um, even when I'm writing, I mean, if I'm writing, it would be probably instrumental and at a very low volume. Um, if there's no music, I, I have this sort of earthen bowl with earthen uh, frogs. It's like a little um, uh, water spout. It's one of these little Zen garden thingies, you know, but in miniature. So there's this constant, lovely sound of water you know, gurgling, in a sense. It just gives you that sense of um, 
warm and you're in touch with Mother Earth. And it's also very similar to Indian classical music because um, you'll see there's always a person behind with a, you know, a stringed sitar-like instrument, uh, which just basically they strum to keep the background uh, tonal registers in order. It sort of provides the bass. Um, so the same thing, to me, they're all very similar structurally, and that is the advantage maybe I see now. Of course, as a youngster, I had no idea of all this, but I see now the similarity and the importance of form formalism and what you break away from. So how structure, rhythm, uh, line, light, musicality, uh, cadence, texture, they all work in very similar ways in any of the art forms we pick, be it writing or photography or filmmaking or dance and music. So they are very interlinked as far as I'm concerned. Is, I, I've talking to a few writers and um, as, as an editor myself, as, as, someone, as a film editor, I tend to work with timelines and I'm very structured in where things should happen and all that kind of... And as an architect, I'm sure you, you've, you've had to deal with structures within, you know, you, you talked about the frame, which is quite interesting. Um, within your poetry, do you, do you follow similar sort of patterns in structure or, you know, how do you work with things? So poetry? when I started out, I was actually, as I said earlier, I was a f more formal poet. So, you know, the, then the structures are pre-laid. So if you're writing a sonnet, then the structure's already been prescribed to you. Of course, there are variations in sonnets. You can have a Shakespearean sonnet or an uh, Alexander sonnet, or you know, there are various kinds of sonnets. Uh, but they're all prescribed, so you're writing within that, um, um, and that's useful because you're actually really learning the tools of the trade. Um, it was the norm at that time in that age, but now with the way that our diction and vocabulary and sound of language and sound of art in a more holistic way has changed that those older rhythms may be uh, dated. So we constantly find new metaphors and new languages to, uh, we have to explore different things. So once you have that structure, it's, you know, you can break away and innovate and make new structures. So, for instance, uh, to, put, to put dance, music, and poetry together, uh, there's a poem I wrote called The Bharatanatyam Dancer. It's one of the classical Indian dances. Uh, and um, initially, when I watched the dancer on stage, I was completely smitten. I said, my God, this is brilliant, you know. Uh, so I wrote a version of the poem. But as I was going through various drafts, I saw there's a patterning that started emerging. And then I said, this is interesting. Let me just push this for, uh, further. And then I asked the dancer, could I possibly, you know, uh, see some of her rehearsals, but from not the proscenium uh, space, that is the X, Y of the stage, the frame, axes of the frame or the stage. And of course, we imagine the depth, which is the Z axis. I said, no, let me just dispense with all that. And what if I was the lights boy on top? So I climbed up to the rigs on top and watched the dancer um, rehearse. And I took uh, photographic snapshots of all the foot movements. And I, when I assembled all the foot movements, again, I saw a kind of visual patterning emerging. And then the structure of the poem started emerging. And she was dancing to this very strict tal and bowl, what we call in classical music. So that kept resonating in my ear. So I said, if that is possible, can I not invent a new rhyme scheme? A, B, A, C, C, A, A, B, A, C, C, A. So then I invented that rhyme scheme. And then I said, let me work the poem in a way that it sort of fits that rhyme scheme. Now that rhyme scheme doesn't exist in the English literature canon. Now it does. So these were the wonderful 
um, accidents and discoveries one sort of um, makes. And if one is obsessive and crazy like people like us who just want to follow passion in a way that it should be outside the prescriptive spaces of um, society or the industry. We have more on the way, so please subscribe to this channel and check out the link below if you'd consider becoming a patron to help us keep making more content. Thanks for watching.